and they're going to have to worry about the Bills coming up on the outside, making the hard push at the end. Two-game lead the Dolphins have with four to play. They finish the season against each other. There's a chance Week 18 comes down to AFC East, Bills at Dolphins, because the Bills win and complete the sweep. Because remember, the Bills, they popped the Dolphins' balloon 48-20 to earlier this year. Back when we thought the Dolphins were eh and the Bills were great. Then the Dolphins became great. The Bills became eh. And now, now all they have to do is pick up one game in the next three weeks. And week 18 is AFC East championship game. Hallelujah. Maybe Sunday night. Who knows? Who knows how they're going to make their choices? Because they got two games they got to put on Saturday now. They got to pick the Sunday night game. There are rules about flexing with Thursday and Monday involved to complicate the whole thing. But yeah, clear shot. It's not going to be winners in and losers out. That's usually the perfect final game of the season. But yeah. you can have very impactful final games. Remember, there was a 49ers Seahawks game 2019. Winners the one seed, losers the five seed. Big game with big implications. Could be, could be winners the two seed. Because I think the Ravens now, I saw last night on ESPN, 53% chance the Ravens are going to be the one seed. Could be winners the one seed. Could be winners the two seed. But obviously, whoever doesn't win the division is at best going to be the five seed in the AFC. So, Dolphins all of a sudden, smooth sailing. And one of the big points they made on hard knocks when they were 8-3 and and moved to 9-3, and that was huge for them because they were 8-3 and last year and they lost five in a row. And they were very happy to get to nine and three because that was the indication that this year isn't going to be like last year. Well, now, now all of a sudden last year is showing up again and we'll see if they can get it together with this reborn for the fifth time, Zach Wilson jets and they got nothing to lose and nobody expects anything from them. And it's a short week for the dolphins. Like you said, Tyreek Hill questions about him questions about Tua. So, Rematch of the Black Friday game coming around quick. And uh, all of a sudden, and it's, it's, it changes. You know, we, we think that we have it all figured out. And all it takes is one three-minute window of a game, and it all changes. It all changes. Although, that said, I mean, the Titans were giving it to them all night long. It really is weird how the Dolphins yeah. exploded to take that lead. Because all night long, it felt sluggish, and it felt like the Dolphins were off. And then all of a sudden, it was like, oh, okay, they're the Dolphins again, but only because of another special teams miscue by the Titans that turned into a Raheem Mostert touchdown. And then that weird, ill-advised Will Levis flip to Derrick Henry that turned into another Raheem Mostert touchdown. He now is 18, tying Ricky Williams for the franchise single-season record. And then it's 27-13. It's like, okay, the Dolphins finally showed up. No, and and that's why I give the I give the Titans a ton of credit. And there's the moment. There's the moment when it's 20 to 13 and the Dolphins get the ball again. And it's like, all right, you know, this is yeah, it was a weird game. We, you know, we 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 kind of played with our food a little bit and well, we're gonna we're gonna win, we're gonna cover. They're sticking it to the Titans a little bit with the remember the Titans dance. Maybe they shouldn't have done that. And uh, there's Mostert (laughs) with touchdown number 18. But I yeah, I give the Titans a ton of credit. It would have been so easy in that moment to say, you know what? We gave it our shot. We tried. At least you tried with the Bart Simpson cake. And, yeah. and uh, you know, we, we it, it ended up where we knew it was going to go. But, no, Will Levis and company fought and scratched and clawed, and they pulled off the victory. Yeah, they did. And Yeah, it was. It was a fold-up-the-tents moment when, you know, Will Levis pitches that thing to Derrick Henry and it's a fumble and it, it just looked really, really bad. It was one of those plays where it was kind of like, man, did y'all practice this enough this week? Like you had an extra day of practice and then you come out in the game and then you run it in that critical situation and it just looked like nobody was prepared for it. But, you know, to their credit, they came back, they went down the field quickly, they scored, they got the stop, they went down the field quickly and scored in 26 seconds of game time. And when that happened, Mike, I'm like, well, that's enough time for the dolphins to go do what they need to do, especially because we just seen the giants go do what they need to do on the other channel. So that's another thing where it's like, all right, well, let's see what, what does Tua have right here? Can Tyreek be effective in this two minute drill off the ankle injury? Can Jalen Waddle be effective off the ankle, excuse me, off, you know, just be effective enough 
to go down the field and score. So that's one thing we didn't see from the Dolphins. They did not respond in the way that they needed to in the critical situation. And you look at what the defense did here. They collapsed the pocket to the Titans, and then they had somebody else right where a Tua Tonga Vailoa was going to try to escape the pocket up the middle, and he couldn't do it. So I just, I thought the Titans did a phenomenal job pretty much throughout the night. I mean, think about how many times the Dolphins actually were able to score on offense when they didn't have a short field. You know, you had a Levis pick six, then you had two touchdowns basically off of really bad turnovers. The, the Titans went in there and they played a great, great football game. They really did. So, you know what? Anybody that's got to play the Titans over the next few weeks, look out because that team is still playing and they're still playing hard. And, and that's the thing that's been so refreshing about these past few weeks. Maybe it's just because the teams really are more jumbled up than the records would suggest. When I sat down yesterday to start to map out the power rankings for this week, it dawned on me there's one exceptional team, the 49ers. There's mm-hmm. four great teams. There's one really bad team in the Panthers. And then there's everybody else where – their record is a product of happenstance, injury, bad calls, which always entail a very good call for someone else. You know, people <laughs> complain about bad calls because we don't want bad calls. But there's uh-huh. usually a team that's just kind of like keeping their head low and their mouth shut after a bad call because they benefited from that horrendous call. No complaints from the Packers after they wiped out MVS nine days ago and preserve their win over the Chiefs. So no complaints from the Bills after the very accurate call. We'll talk about the aftermath of that later on Sunday on Kadarius Tony. But it really is any given Sunday from 6 to 31. And you're going to win some, and you're going to lose some. And I don't want to take away from talent and coaching and preparation and seizing the moment. But there really isn't that much of a difference Once you get out of the top five, there isn't that much of a difference between the Lions and the Cardinals. There really isn't. Yeah. Yeah. Other than the fact that their records are different. (laughs) This year, yeah, that that is the case. I mean, especially with the Lions right now with the way they're trending. I mean, they're not – the Lions are not trending in the right direction, you know, especially given the way they've played, I don't know, let's call it since Thanksgiving. They're just – they're not as sharp – They're not doing the things that they need to do to be a great team. So, yeah, they're a good team. They've got a good record, but right now they're not playing great. And, you know, all of those things matter, I think, in December when you're trying to make a playoff push. Can you actually do the things that you need to do in order to win, in order to get the highest possible seed, in order to secure your division? All those things matter. So I I do think you're right, you know, from about, I would say, even maybe about five or six. You know, I, I I don't know how many really good teams there really are it's just kind of a lot of mid and you know some teams are in the upper echelon of mid but there's one great team to me right now and that's the san francisco 49ers as long as everybody's healthy well i'll give you a little preview because these go live on tuesday after Mm -hmm. the show now we present them here and discuss them and critique them on wednesday's pft live but here's what i've got so far just as an illustration of how of how Beyond the 49ers and the Ravens and the Cowboys and the Eagles, it becomes difficult. Because now the Dolphins, before last night's game, to me, the five teams that stood apart were 49ers, Ravens, Cowboys, Eagles, Dolphins. Okay, They're the top five. A little preview. Number six is the seven and six Bills. Number six is the seven and six Bills. They're hot. And, I mean, who, who else would it be? The Chiefs? who just lost to the Bills, the Lions, who just lost handily to the Bears and have lost two of their last three, the Jaguars, who have lost two in a row. I mean, the Browns finish out the top 10 after beating the Jaguars, and now I'm looking at this. Wait a minute. I better put the Browns ahead of the Jaguars. I better move them up. See, I haven't done the final edits yet. But number six is the Buffalo Bills right now. Number six. Yes, I knew you would like that. Number six. oh, Oh, my son's mad at me because I'm in with the Browns. He's... You know, he's like, I don't like the Browns. Like, well, I kind of like the Browns because when why? you, you know, I, I, I become, well, I, I'll tell you, let me tell you why I am. 
because like I want you to be happy as much as you might as much as you might think otherwise. Maybe I just feel guilty because I make your life miserable on a day in and day out basis. I want you to be happy. I think that in the broader football universe, there's something that is right and good and true about the Browns being good. I think it's horrible yeah, for fans that have put in the time. They've put in the money. They've put in the effort. They've put in the emotion to just constantly be crapped on by the football gods. And also, my my niece is a huge Browns fan. That's a fairly significant part of it, too. I want her to be happy. I like it when the games are going on and she texts me and she's happy. You know, it's just – and I, I love the Joe Flacco story. I told Flacco when I talked to him on Sunday, look, they asked me who I root for. I root for good stories, and you're a great story, and keep kicking ass. And, that, you know, it's just a fun, fun thing that the Browns are doing. So you're right. They need to be ahead of the Jaguars. Sorry, Jaguars. But that's just an example of how it's all just kind of clustered together. And yes. that's what makes – and, and uh, look, I didn't volunteer to – hype up the final four weeks of the NFL season on behalf of the NFL. But, you know, given the fact that I spend every waking moment of my life promoting their product, it's probably kind of baked into what I do. These next four weeks are going to be awesome. I mean, this is it. This is the, the chase to the finish where there's one team. I mean, think about this. It's a race. It's a marathon, but it's become a sprint. The final four weeks is the sprint. And you've got the person in first place who has a huge margin, who has the history of tripping over their own two feet and falling down and injuring themselves and being the Peter Griffin gif where they're holding their knee while everybody passes them by. And then you've got a pack of a few behind, far behind, and then you got everybody else. And somebody's going to come out of that everybody else and maybe pick off the second group and maybe make a run at the team that has that propensity to trip over their own two feet, get themselves injured, and be a very different team. So even though 49ers far and away the best team right now, these last four weeks have the potential to be awesome as we figure out who's going to have the chance to try to chase down the best teams when the postseason rolls around. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's tight in both the AFC and the NFC. I mean, you know, we think, I think, of the AFC is right now the better conference or just less top heavy, but you've got a lot of good teams. And think about it right now, the bills who are very high in your power rankings, they're seven and six, but they've still got to jump a lot of teams just to get in the actual playoff picture, as opposed to being in the hunt. I believe they're a no, they don't. in the conference. No, they right don't. Now. No, they don't. No, they don't. All they have to do is pick up one game on the Dolphins. All they have to do is pick up one game on the Dolphins over the next three weeks, and they're in if they beat the Dolphins Week 18. They don't have to jump anybody. All they have to do is pick up one game on the Dolphins over the next three weeks. The Dolphins who play the Cowboys and the Ravens over the course of the next three weeks pick up one game, and it's a playoff game, de facto Week 18. You win and you're in. Even if you don't get in as a wild card, you do get in as the AFC East champion. Well, that also counts on the Bills continuing to stay hot and continuing to win, right? So there are no guarantees in that because we've seen the Bills fall over themselves and trip over themselves this year, too. So I'm just saying, you know, there's a lot that goes into it. And again, that's part of what makes exactly what your point was, that these last quarter of the season, which I will still call it that, even though there's no quarters to the season anymore because there are 17 games. But this last quarter of the season is going to be very exciting because you have all of these teams that are still in it and not just from the wild card perspective in the AFC, but also in the NFC where you've got a bunch of teams. Some teams are playing better than others. The Rams, I think if they keep playing the way they're playing and they play the way they played at Baltimore aside from, you know, letting up six missed tackles on a punt return, like, they are going to continue to keep themselves in the playoff picture too, right? And then you've got the NFC South. And there's a lot of exciting stuff coming up here. So I, I'm really excited for the last quarter of the season, and I think we all should be. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.